So what is microbiomes responsible for? So here we are. Are you sending mixed signals? Now, all I know is every single thing I put into my intestinal tract and those villi were pushing it along and sucking nutrition out of it. There was no nutrition to suck. So the message I was actually giving my immune system was I'm going to starve you. I don't like you. I don't respect you. And believe me, it works because I'm sitting here every day and helping people who end up with catastrophic disease who didn't even know they were disrespecting their immune system by eating stuff, not food. When a microbiome is flooded with energy in the form of undigested and partially digested foods, and I say foods with quote, and in some cases drugs, conflicting messages reign. Now, can you imagine putting a drug into the body when the villa pulls that up rather than a nutrient, and it's supposed to be nourishing the human cells of the body and activating the immune system, what happens? Well, it starts to intake the drug and attempt to use it as it does nutrition, and obviously it's not nutrition. So you have misguided energy, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Each of these elements sends signaling messages about food intake, and the state of digestion to your entire physiological, and now we enter the second psychological system. Aha! So I'm going to now prove to you over the next few minutes that your psychology and your biology depends upon eating plant-based foods more than any other single factor. This is no longer subject to challenge. This is no longer speculation. This is no longer hypotheses. This is confirmed. Now, you may not like what we have to say, or you may be open-minded and really wanting to become your maximum best. So please follow through with me. I started to recognize a number of decades ago what was going on. Now, the signals come from proteins. We knew that Brobel back in 1999 won the Nobel Prize, by the way, when he showed us that how cells communicate with one another in anatomy, meaning or liver uh, talks to the gallbladder and the heart speaks to the brain and all of these different things happen is through protein signaling going back and forth. Now, enzymes, which are incorrectly taught at university, uh, are only taught to be proteins. But what their real job is to come in and break up nutrition, including proteins. And when an enzyme comes in and literally starts to emulsify, break up the protein shell, the messaging becomes, as you see, systematically enlarged. So the equal sign means different forms of messages coming from one protein. Now let's go back and revisit what I said two minutes ago. Imagine if you're not getting nutrition, but you're getting drugs. Imagine if you're eating the way that I did at one point in my life. Everything was chemicalized. Everything was sugar. Everything was non-nutritious. So now when the enzyme comes in to break these elements and proteins up, there is a complete confusion within the human system. And do some of you feel that? You're not congruent with your body? Oh, I don't feel I can fit. I don't feel I can move. Yeah, this is why because you've literally been not only starving your body of nutrition, but information. Now, here's how it works. This all begins in the intestinal tract with these messaging. Remember, 80% of immunity comes from there. And literally, you look at your spine. Now, you have something called a neurological system. And that, <laughs> believe it or not, as funny as it sounds for the non-scientists here, until the late 1990s, we used to think the brain completely controlled the rest of the body. The brain was sort of the puppeteer and the body followed what the brain wanted. Thank God, a group of out of the box thinking good scientists said, no, wait a minute, the body talks to the brain too. So when we see this 
messaging going up the entire spinal cord and the neurological system, the nervous system with neurons into the brain, equally it comes back down. And this is why many times you have an intent intellectually to do something, but your body's not following through with it. And most of the time, the congruency is not there because you're not giving yourself consistent positive messaging because you're not putting into your body the required nutrients. Now, most of you say, well, I know the required nutrients are proteins and vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids and all of this stuff, and that's great. But once you process and once you cook a food, they are basically unable and incapable of giving the right messaging because there's an electromagnetic charge that's required the energy within living food to give proper notoriety and messaging. The gut-brain axis. Now we take a deeper dive into the psychology. The gut-brain axis, that is a network of cellular and chemical signaling between the gut and the nervous system associates change in the gut microbiome with behavior and neuromuscular conditioning. So how about things like Parkinson's disease? How about things like anxiety, depression, or even autism? How about it? There's no question about it. This is bad messaging, bad signaling, and bad nutrition. I don't know how many hundreds of families I've worked with who had autistic children just by changing their diet to the Hippocrates lifestyle. There was dramatic and consistent improvement. I don't know how many people have come here for an unrelated problem, but because of that problem, they were often anxious and depressed. And we've seen that go to the wayside. I don't know how many people with Parkinson's disease that were degenerating the whole system, halted by changing their lifestyle to the right foods, the foods that all creatures on earth eat except human beings. Continual evidence suggests that select members of the microbiota have the ability to synthesize and or regulate various neurochemicals. Now, oh boy, this is really exciting stuff. And this is very recent, by the way. This is in the last six months we've gotten this science. So what we now know is that your brain chemistry literally depends upon the bacteria, and particular forms of bacteria, not just bacteria. This is where we're getting to a point of being refined and speak with utter authority on this subject now. And the one that I'm most interested in is serotonin. In the past, I would say it correctly, but we didn't have the depth of data that we have today. I said that that's called happy juice serotonin. Now, serotonin is actually scientifically called 5-HT. And many of you have been told by intelligent nutritional scientists or doctors, by the way, if you have depression, take 5-HTP. It's a form of that. And there's been great results with it. But by the way, you're not supposed to have to take a supplement to reverse depression or prevent depression. You're supposed to be eating and living a particular way. And so why depression and anxiety is rampant today is we're not eating a particular way. Serotonin is functional in a diverse neurotransmission. Neurotransmission happens to be hormones. And remember I showed you that movement from the spine, from the intestinal tract, up the spine to the brain, and from the brain downward, that's neurotransmitters. And serotonin is responsible for supporting this neurotransmitter. This can be elusive sometimes though. Now, serotonin is the most widely distributed transmitter in the brain and the signaling pathways. Now think of that. Think of what it's actually responsible for. Homeostasis, that's actually biological balance, physiological balance. Sensory processing. That means you see something. If you don't have enough serotonin, you can't relate to what it is. And how many of you find yourself stumbling? You've seen that a thousand times, but you can't put two and two together. Cognitive control. So is your mind rampant and running like a wild horse? Or is it under control 
where you can utilize it as a violin. Emotional regulation. Do you fly off the handle, get really depressed? And you don't have to be bipolar to do that, by the way. And bipolar is actually in part, in great part, created by lack of serotonin. Autotomic response. You know how important that is, especially as we get older, like motor activity? And so why people, as we age, become feeble, fall, lose their memory, we're now leading you right into it. Isn't it interesting how much more simple it is than all the people doing big research with billions of your donated dollars to find out why we have dementia? Why do we have depression? Why do we have Parkinson's? Well, for free here on The Real Truth About Health, you're going to learn. Serotonin production. The majority of the body serotonin is contained within the gut, 90%. So let's go back and revisit the immunity, 80%. And let's talk about serotonin, which controls practically your entire emotional human being, 90%. And if you go to university, they're not going to tell you this. Isn't that interesting? So they're colonized in your microbiota. And this is communities. They're responsible for the production and circulation of the serotonin. Now, you could create serotonin. Let's imagine 90% of your serotonin is being created in your intestinal tract. And by the way, I'm being very conservative because I've read out of the last um, 12 articles I've read, eight of them are now saying it's between 93 and 96%. So almost everything is, 90 is pretty good. So that's a low end of the scale here. Cas can't stay within your intestinal tract. It has to be circulated. Now, remember, we go back to that picture we showed you of coming out of the intestinal tract and going up the neurological system to the human brain. And by the way, after it does its job there, it comes back down and takes care of all of those responses and control mechanisms you have that make your emotional person up. Now, linking the microbiome to the immune system, we'll go back and take a deeper dive. And once again, look at how the bacteria multiply so rapidly. This is literally not in any way speeded up. This is how it works. This is just an electron microscope looking at the bacteria manifesting within the human system. Immune signaling and serotonin. How many of you know you have these things right now listening to me, believe it or not, lighting up? And it has recently been discovered that serotonin provides a link between neuronal signaling and immune response, establishing a well-defined neuroimmune communication network throughout the body. Well, just today, I was reading a study that came out nine months ago that literally tells you they now have linked it to cancer. So if you, by the way, don't have adequate amounts of serotonin because you haven't fed yourself the right diet, and we're going to get to that in a minute, you basically are going to be greatly, greatly capable of contracting a wide variety of cancers. We actually know that it talks to the T cell. Serotonin and its signaling causes the activation of T cells. T cells form the majority of the pillar of the adaptive immune system. Now, last year, if you watched my presentation, I made it really simple for every one of you to understand the immune system. That was the entire presentation. So you can access that on The Real Truth About Health. As a recent serotonin turns on and off our immunity. Can you imagine that? So now this protein communication that Burbell talked about way back 23 years ago, literally, we went one, one step deeper. This may be five steps deeper. Let's be candid about this. And we actually realize we know it's the T cell, the adaptive immune system. Now, remember, you have two immunities. You have one that anything that comes in that ought not to be there, bad guys. Now, again, what are bad guys? Bad guys are bad bacteria, and the bacterial infections come from that. Bad viruses, fungi, mold, 
the wrong yeast, parasites, the list goes on. So in the first 96 hours, this part of the immune system basically fights it. And if it's so strong, so strong that it makes it through, it goes to the second layer. They're the elite military soldiers, the immune soldiers that literally beat it up. And by the way, if it doesn't happen after 96 hours and it goes to the secondary immune system, you're in trouble. That's when people end up with fatality out of microbial diseases. <laughs>